Now, in this part, we will see together how to create or how to code the REST API. So here I will explain our project uh, structure and different packages and folders and also uh, classes. So we have here the config controllers, uh, DTO, exception handlers, model repositories, services, this is the utils and the validators. So if you if you remember from the from the pre previous um, lecture, when I explained the application architecture, we said that we receive uh, a request and it goes to the controller and then it goes to the service. And from the service, we call the validator and then we call the database, which is here. And if everything is going fine, then we will map a DTO to a model or the model to the DTO, which is entity DTO or um, DTO entity. So let's start here. For example, first of all, I want to explain to you the model part or how to how to transform this uh, the database uh, model to Java classes. So as I explained, we have user, category, and a to do. Let's start with the user. Here, what do we have? Here we have all the fields of the user class or the user table, which which is the image of the user table and the database. So here what we have is we have a class called user implements serializable and this is the main annotation or the needed annotation to tell Spring uh, and Hibernate this is my, uh, my class, uh, my class, my the image, sorry, this is the image of the database class. Uh, sorry, this is the image of the database table of, uh, for the user table. So we have here the ID, first name, last name, email, username, and password. So here, the ID, I need to precise and I need to tell Hibernate or Spring that this is my ID column. And it's a type, it's of uh, a long type, it's a long uh, field. And the annotation ID is meant to say that this is the ID of my class. And here it's the generated, the generated value annotation is to tell Spring and Hibernate that this field, I want this field to be automatically generated. And if I do not precise the strategy of the generation strategy, so uh, Hibernate will detect or will determine the best uh, strategy based on the database uh, we, are, we are using. So, and if you will remember, we said that the user can have zero or many categories. So we can see it here that we have a list of categories and it's in the user in the user class and it's one user this annotation one to many means one user to many categories and it's mapped by user and user is the name of the property or the name of the field inside the category class. Now I will go to the category and I have here, as I told you, this entity annotation, and I will explain just next those three annotations. Uh, we have this entity annotation, we have the ID, also mapped with ID and generated value. So when we want to create a new, uh, a new category, for example, I, don't, I do not need to calculate or to, uh, or to precise uh, the ID of the category. It's going to be automatically uh, generated. So we have a name and description for the category. And then here we have the user. So if you will remember the, the relation between the user and the category, we said that the user can have uh, zero or multiple categories. And here in the user class, we have category and it's mapped by user. So user is the name of this field or of this variable in, in the category class. So here the annotation, it's many categories to one user. So we I resume once again, user can have multiple categories. And the annotation, uh, join column, the join column is inside uh, the category table. I want the user uh, to be mapped using uh, a column uh, named user ID. So I can just precise that ID or user or anything, but Personally, I prefer that to, to, to put it explicitly, you as user ID. 
And we said also that uh, the one category is composed of a to-do list or of a to-dos. And here it's the same. Uh, one category can have many to-dos. So, and it's mapped by category. And as I said, category is the name. Sorry, category is uh, is the name of of the variable of or of the category type here. And here I will explain this fetch type. So the fetch type by default, as you can see here, by default is fetch type dot lazy. So what does mean uh, fetch type dot lazy? The lazy fetch type that means when I query the category, I will not get uh, automatically all the linked uh, to dos. So here, when I precise that I need uh, that I need a fetch type eager, that means when I, for example, when I send a request or I when I type a, a query, uh, select uh, star from category, it's gonna return the list of category, all the categories, and for each category, it's gonna send uh, it's gonna send me the list of of the to-dos. So this is our uh, this is our model or the, the data, uh, database tables. Now I will explain to you those three annotations which are which are uh, a part of the Lombok. Uh, the Lombok will, will automatically generate uh, the getters, the setters and so on and so forth. So when I use the data annotation that means it will automatically generate uh, getters and setters here to generate uh, all args uh, constructor and no args constructor so this is uh, those are the models now i will explain to you the dtos the DT dto is uh, the abbreviation of data transfer object and i will start from the user here we have the annotation data to generate the getters and setters. We have all args constructors and no args constructors. And we have a builder, which is the design pattern builder, which allow us to build, um, to build uh, an object. And I will explain it just later. And as you can see here, uh, the user DTO is the same image or the, contains the same attributes as, uh, as the model. So for example, if I, why we use DTOs, for example, when I want to uh, to expose my API to another third party, and I only for the user, for example, I only need to expose first name, last name, and email. So, if I will expose the model, um, I will I will expose all the fields. But if I want to expose only specific fields, I need to map it with a DTO. I need to create a DTO, a data transfer object and then use the mapping from entity to DTO and so on so and vice versa to return only the fields I want to uh, I want to send back. So here we have also the list of category and I have this annotation which is called JSON ignore. So this annotation will uh, when, when I get the information we will ignore this list. So when I get user or when I fetch user so I will not uh, return the categories with. Here in each DTO and it's, yeah, I, I will continue here and it's gonna be the same for category DTO. It's gonna be ID, name, description, and user and the list of to-do lists and the same for the to-dos. But we don't have, uh, sorry, this is the model, the to-do DTO. And here, we don't have any mappings like we have here. We don't have, we don't use the the GPA uh, the GPA annotations. So let's go back here. And as you can see, in each DTO we have two methods, which are to entity and from entity. I will explain those uh, those two methods. So the first one to entity we we provide as a parameter a user DTO and we will map from user DTO to a user entity, to the entity, from the DTO to the model, to the model. And it's a simple set and get. It's not that, uh, that complicated. And here, for example, for the user, I will, uh, I will map everything. If I have a category, if, if I have the categories, I will also map them. 
So I will just stream and map, and here I will call the two entity from the category DTO and then collect the list. Else I will return null. So here this is the method uh, to entity, and we have the other method which is from entity. And the from entity method, uh, just one moment, I will. So like this, I think it's, yeah, I think it's even bigger. Yeah, let's say 50 is okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, here, for example, the from entity, here, this is the usage of the builder, of this annotation builder, this one. So it will automatically, or Lombok will automatically generate uh, a builder design pattern. So uh, we, we say only our DTO or our, or our class dot builder, and then we only set the ID, first name, last name, and so on and so forth. And then when we, when we are finished, we only uh, call the build method and it's gonna build automatically. Uh, the object or the class. So um, now it's the same for the to do. It's the same for all the uh, all the DTOs. We have always to entity and from entity. Now this is the first part. Now I will go to the same scenario who we we discussed before. So for the controllers. Here, what I have done is I created uh, I created an interface for each uh, for each controller. It's just to it's a service contract. Uh, and if I want, for example, to uh, if I want to make or to create a second implementation, so I have always to stick to the same uh, methods. So like this, all the API versions, if I want to create the second version, should and will work correctly. So let's explain, for example, let's start with the category API. Don't get scared of these annotations. I will explain them later. Those annotations are the annotations from the Swagger and they are used to generate the API documentation. So here we have a response on entity, which is create category and create. We have create update. Uh, get all the categories, get all to do's by categories ID, uh, get to do by category for today. It's when we want uh, to get the my day categories, uh, get all categories by user ID, get category, and here we have delete category. And it's this, it's almost the same methods for the other controllers. So here, let's see, let's check the implementation. The implementation here. Even the controller is quite uh, simple and easy to read. So for create category, I just call my category service .save. So when I first receive a request, this is uh, the dispatcher servlet will uh, will intercept it and then send it to the corresponding controller. For example, if I want to create a new category, so then the dispatcher servlet will send it to the category controller. And here, as I said, we implement the category API. Now the category uh, and the method create category will call the category service.save method. And we will return a response entity from this and with the HTTP status created. So now let's go to the service. Just always when I when I'm explaining this, just try always to remember the the architecture schema that I draw and explained to you. So here for the service, I have also created uh, an interface, an interface which contains uh, a list of methods. It's just, as I said, an interface, the definition of an interface is the service contract. So in my contract, I need to save, find all, find by, find uh, by user and so on and so forth, delete and so on and so forth whatever method uh, I need, I, I need to implement. So here I have the interface and then I have the implementation. 
all those folders is just to organize uh, to organize the code. We can put all of them together, but it's going to be really really complicated to to read it. So here, let's check method by method, and it's going to be the same for uh, for all the other services and and controllers. So let's start with the save method. Here, the save method, uh, as we said, and try always, as I, as I told you, to remember this schema. First, the first thing after calling the service, we will call the validator. And here I created a validator package, which contains category validator to do validator and the user validator. And here, each, each validator will return a list of strings. And when, when I call my service, I need to call first my validator. So this method validate category, I pass my category DTO as a parameter, and then I will ch try to, to check. So if I pass a null uh, category, I will just raise those errors, error messages, which, which are, please fill the name, please fill the description. Else, if the category is not null, so I will, I will need to check them field by field. Uh, or if you have other, uh, other business rules you can, for the validation, you can implement them here. For example, if the category name should be only two characters, so here we can also test, uh, test and check the, the length of, of the category name, for example. And here, if uh, it's better to use the string uh, utils from Spring Framework, and this method, the method is empty, it checks both of them. If if the uh, if the string is null or equals to to empty string, so it's always better to use to use this and uh, rather than. Uh, creating like if category DTO dot name not equals uh, null and uh, not empty. So I just can use this method directly. If it's empty, so I will add an error. Please fill the name and the same thing for the description. Please fill the description and then I will return return the errors. Now let's go back to the service. And here, this is where we will decide what to do next. If the error is not empty, that means that I have some errors. So here I will log and I will explain those annotations. Don't worry. I will just want to go uh, step by step. If I have errors, so then, as I said, we will throw an exception. And for the exceptions, I've, as I told you, I created like a custom exception for each type of exception here. I will just show you really fast. We have entity not found exception and unvalid entity exception. So if uh, when I validate my category, for example, and it's not valid, so I will raise an invalid entity exception with this specific message. Uh, category is not valid. And the error code is category is not valid. And let's see the error codes here. And they will explain it really fast. Here we have user not found, uh, category not found. What I have done is I start from 1000 for all the not found exceptions or error codes and from 2000 uh, for any kind of uh, not valid uh, error codes. And for example, if you have another error code, you can start from 3000 and so on and so forth. It's up, honestly, it's up to you to, to decide what to do. And this is an, uh, this is, uh, an enum. It's a simple enough. So here, let's go back, and I will at the end I will explain uh, all the exceptions and so on and so forth. I just want to continue with the scenario. Here, if I have errors, I will raise this exception, and this exception is, is gonna be automatically handled or intercepted by the handler. For this handler, I have. I have this handler which is annotated with the REST controller advice. Actually, we have controller advice and REST controller advice. The REST controller advice, that means the return type is going to be automatically JSON, JSON type. So for, for, the, for the exception handler, all we need to do is to extend the response entity exception handler. And now we will we have like several or different methods 
which that we can call handle exception and for each for each method we tell we tell what kind of exception we need to intercept so here for this one i threw uh, i throw the invalid entity exception and it's going to be intercepted here this is the invalid entity exception so every time i raise the invalid entity exception it's going to be intercepted automatically by spring here in this class and we receive as parameter the, the exception so it's going to be this exception with this specific message with this error code and errors so and we have a web request this is something i will talk about later first of all i will log the error using the, the SLF4G from the Lombok uh, annotation, from the Lombok uh, API, sorry. Uh, here, I just uh, fetch the, the HTTP status from, uh, from the exception, and I know if it's invalid, so I define it as a bad request. And then I try to create my error DTO, which is this one. And the error DTO, I have the getter setters, uh, all uh, args instructor and the builder. And here I have this API model, which is an annotation from Swagger, as you can see here. And they have the API model properties. So uh, annotation, so like this, when I send back the annotation to, uh, to the browser or to the, or to the client, it's going to be really and easy to understand. So here I have the code, the error code, I have, sorry, I have the HTTP code and I have the error codes, which are my, my error codes, the one I defined. Uh, also, we have the message and the list of the errors. Let's go back now here. So all I will do is I will, I will build this error DTO from the exception. So I will exception dot get error code, which is the, the enum and the HTTP code is going to be the bad request I already defined. The message is the uh, exception.get message, which will be this one. Category is not valid. And the errors is the list of errors if, if it's about a validation. So this is, uh, this is the interceptor. And now let's go back to the service. If this is now that we are in the second case, if I don't have any exception uh, or my DTO or my entity is valid, what I will do is I will call the mapping and inside that I will call my repository or my database. So if you remember, we had that after the validation, if everything is fine, I will call hibernate and hibernate will call We'll, uh, we'll call the database. So this is the database call. It's here, which is category repository dot save. And I will pass as a parameter my, my entity, and which is a mapping from the DTO to the entity. And once all this is done correctly, I will map it again to the DTO. So I will call the from entity, and here I will call to the entity because when persisting, I need an entity. And when I want to return the response, I need my DTO. So this is, this is uh, one scenario of how it works. Now, to tell Spring that this is a service and it needs, be to, needs, needs to be automatically injected and uh, the, the bean lifecycle should be handled by Spring, I need the annotation service here because it's a service. We can use the annotation service or component. It's the same, but service is just for better reading because here it's it's my server. It's the service I want uh, that I am implementing. So here we have we saw something which is repository, and here the the word auto wired. When I use the annotation auto wired, that means I want to tell Spring that I need you to inject to automatically inject. The implementation or to inject this this bean so i don't need here to to, to say that this is uh equal sorry new new category repository and so on and so forth so when i tell spring this 
when I have this annotation spring will, will automatically inject it. So here I will explain to you the repository, which is this part. And this part is really, really, really quite easy. And I have my repositories here. Now I will go to the category repository. And all I need to do is create an interface and extend the GPA repository. And I pass as parameter the entity name or the class or my class because it's my category, it's the entity. And ID is the, sorry, long is the type of my ID. For example, here in my category, here if the ID, if it was, uh, for example, if I choose string as, uh, as ID, here I need to pass string as parameter here. So by default, GPA repository provides us, uh, well, I will just explain something because I think I'm clicking a lot. So like this, I do not, you do not get lost. So now we are in, uh, we are in the category repository. When you type command uh, click for uh, iOS users or you type command click for Windows users, it will automatically um, dispatch you to the definition uh, to the definition of uh, of the class. And here I just click download sources so I can see even the Java doc and everything. So as I said, the GPA repository provides us with already with uh, predefined uh, methods, which is find all, find all with sort, find by ID, save, save all, and so on and so forth. We have several methods that we do not need to do anything. For example, if our uh, repository con consists only on saving, uh, updating, and deleting, saving, updating, deleting, and read all uh, the records from the database, we do not need any, any method here. Here we add only the, the, custom, uh, the custom methods. So one, uh, one other thing which is really important here uh, that, uh, that with, uh, with Spring, uh, with Spring it's really to add any method. For example, this method, which is find category by user ID, this method will return automatically all the categories for a specific user. Why? Here, because in my model, in my category, I have already a user. So when I tell Spring that I want, the, the name should be like this, find. It's find, whether find by or find, for example, I need my category, or it's find by or find category. It should be always like this by and then the you and then the field id for example if i want to fetch category by name all the categories by name all i need to do is do something like this it's gonna be a list of category it's gonna be find by name and i pass as parameter string name here, string name and find category by name. So automatically, Spring will create and prepare the needed query for this. So it's gonna be, um, and here for example, I can add uh, ignore, uh, ignore case or, um, uh, for example, if, if I wanted case sensitive, or not not sensitive and so on and so forth. So uh, so it's up to you to to decide whatever whatever you want. And this is uh, this is the community version. So I don't have the autocomplete. And with the ultimate version, it um, it all it provides also the autocomplete. For example, if I type only find by and then I press Control Space. It's, it's going to list me all the fields and all the methods that I can use to filter with. So this is the repository. For example, when I need when I need to create a method with like a custom or specific query. For example, here I need to find a category by to do ID. 
for example, I pass the to do ID and then I need to return uh, my category or the ID or any kind of return type. So here all we all we need uh, all we need to do is to add a query, the annotation query, and and uh, specify the query. It's here. It's GPQL query. It's the Java persistent persistence query language. If you do not, if you are not familiar with uh, GPQL and you are more familiar with uh, SQL queries, here you can add this. This attribute, which is named to query true. And when you add this one, when you add this one, you can type a native SQL query and it's going to be automatically uh, translated to the to the to the DBMS uh, language. Sorry, yeah. So uh, here, as I said, we use the annotation query and we pass as parameter the query we need to to execute. Here, for example, uh, you see here that I also added a, uh, the param annotation. Here, for example, I receive I say only its ID. But here I pass parameter as like uh, to do ID. I need to add here to so Hibernate will understand it better. I need to add that the name is to do ID. So I think it's long. So here it uh, Hibernate will map this ID with this to do ID name with this parameter value or name. So that's why he, here I added it. So like this, at least you get as many examples or as many use cases uh, as possible. So what's next? Now this is the repository part. Let's go to our, let's go back to our service. And we were discussing about the correct category service as an example. Yeah. So for a service, we need always to add this annotation, the service annotation. If you don't want a logger, just don't add this, uh, this annotation. Here, uh, for example, the different methods here are find uh, save. The save, actually, the method save will do both. We'll do the update because here, as I showed you, we have, uh, sorry, it's in the controller. Category controller. In the category controller, we have a create and update method. So here, it's uh, it's possible only to to add the create uh, create method, but it's not it's not a problem if we add a create or update category. Uh, it can be easy uh, easier to understand by third parties, for example. Uh, here, to the save method, Hibernate uh, will automatically create or update the entity. So if we pass uh, a null ID, Hibernate will understand that this is a creation, that he needs to create a new record in the database. If the ID is not null, so he will fetch, he will fetch the record on the database and update it and, update it and run the SQL uh, query. So, this is um, this is uh, about the services. Now I will explain to you these exceptions: the entity not found and the invalid uh, entity exception. It's almost the same. I will start with the invalid entity exception. Uh, actually, to create uh, a custom uh, to create a custom exception, it's a simple Java class and extends whether runtime or uh, or exception, and it's better to use the runtime exceptions. So when we throw an exception, we 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 are not uh, we do not need uh, obli or, um, obligatory to implement or to catch this exception in the controller, for example. And th this is and Spring also always use uh, runtime exceptions. So like this, if an exception is thrown, the user doesn't need to. To intercept or to catch the exception when he calls the method. So, to create a custom exception, you can pass or you can add as parameters or as uh, as fields as you want, and all you need to do is to create some constructors. 
the first one is one constructor if I only want to throw a an error message, just I want to precise or specify an error message. So I will call the super. Super that means I will call the the parent class, which is runtime exception. With the message parameter, I have also here um, another constructor with the message and throwable. Throwable is the exception, and also it's a super using those two parameters. And I can add the error codes, and here I call the the message and the codes, and here I assign the error codes, so I can use them as I explain in the handler later. And and so on and so forth. You can add as uh, as it, uh, as constructors as you want. So this is uh, the invalid entity exception. And here we have the entity not found exception. It's almost the same, and I have the error codes if I need, and a bunch of constructors. So what need what's next? So we went through all those parts. Yeah, here this one I will explain it in in the next uh, next lectures. So that's all. Yeah, one uh, one comment regarding this. I didn't do a live coding, so to make it uh, to make it easier for you, so just following coding and so on and so forth. Here you have uh, you have uh, all the application resources, so you can just check it. And I hope I explain it easier. If not, just contact me uh, via Instagram or send me an email, and I will add a new lecture or I will add a new video to explain how to code par part by part. But I think only uh, only showing the code is completely sufficient because the code is not even complex. So that's all about uh, coding the API or the REST API.